All right, this video is gonna be looking at uh, managing your tool library, creating tools, keeping it organized, uh, et cetera. Uh, we're gonna hop into, for any operation, you're gonna need you know, tools to work with. So we're gonna hop into our tool library right here. Uh, you can manage your tool library by clicking on this icon right here. Um, your tool library is going to have basically multiple locations or multiple libraries that you can reference. Um, there are some existing Fusion libraries with like default tools that you can download. Uh, I'm not typically going to have us use those just because I feel like it uh, helps us better keep track to make sure that our tool matches what we're actually using if we're creating those tools ourselves. <clears throat> so, a um, couple of ways you can manage your libraries. One, you can have an, a library that exists for a specific part. So if you look right here, right here I have uh, a medallion tool library. Okay, the reason that these tools are here is because these are tools that I use to engrave um, that coin or medallion or keychain or whatever you want to call it. Okay, and they're saved locally or specifically to that file. However, if you want tools that you're going to be able to reference no matter what file you're using, okay, the only reason this is here is because I have that file open. If I were to close that file and now head to my tool library, Uh, you'll see that that's no longer going to be there as those tools that were created for that particular file are no longer there to reference. Okay, all I got is this like, an untitled doc right here that I have open. So, I mean, you can do it that way. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, what we're going to do uh, here together is we're going to create um, a local library. And specifically, I'm actually going to have us create a local library for different pieces of equipment that we use. Um, so I'm going to actually rename this library to Haas Metal. Okay, so that local library now is now uh, specifically going to be a library for uh, the Haas CNC mill down in the woods room. So the reason I'm doing that is because I, that, that uh, piece of equipment has an automatic tool changer, 10 tools, uh, I'm going to create those tools specifically for this machine. That's not to say I couldn't reference them somewhere else, but really I'm creating them for this machine. So I'm going to select this library, and this is where I'm going to create my tools. Now, uh, we're going to create four tool here, tools here because uh, that Haas mill uh, is going to have four tools that I am always going to leave in it. They're always going to be there. They're always going to be slots one through four uh, on the automatic tool changer. So I'm just going to walk through creating those. Um, you can create them along with, stop and start the video as needed. So our first tool here, uh, we're gonna put this little plus button uh, to create a tool within this library. Um, our first one is going to be a face mill or shell mill is sometimes called. Um, I'm just gonna name it, three inch, well, three inch face mill. Now you could put a lot of details in here. Like if you were a company and you were like trying different types of end mill or face mills and like you wanted to like be referencing them like like more specifically than just saying three inch face mill, you could put in the vendor, you could have maybe have a product ID number and stuff like that. Um, there are some pieces of equipment that keep, can keep track of um, some cutting data with all of that information. We're not gonna worry about that. It's just three inch face mill. Um, some, our cutter. Okay, this is a face mill. We're in inches. This is a six flute face mill and it is carbide tipped. Uh, our diameter is three inches. Now, when we're creating these tools, <clears throat> really the three most important things uh, for tool creation, as far as how it affects your tool path and your running, how it runs uh, on the piece of equipment are your tool diameter, uh, and then hopping over here to your spindle speed and your cutting feed rate. Really? Those are kind of the only thing that things that matter. Now you got to make sure that your tool is capable of like reaching everywhere that it needs to and stuff. But as, really, as long as we have that correct diameter um, and then the correct cutting data, namely our spindle speed and feed rate, that's going to create the tool paths that we really need. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, let's get into that. We did our cutting data. Uh, this stuff I'm not even going to worry about. Uh, shaft, nothing we gotta do there. Holder, nothing we gotta do there. Uh, you could if you wanted to, but we don't need to. Cutting data. Two things that I'm specifically gonna enter are spindle speed and cutting feed rate, and everything else is just gonna get calculated from those two things. 
Um, we are going to rock the 5,000 RPM, which if you calculated your feeds and speeds might seem like a lot. Uh, but what that higher RPM is going to do is it's going to give us a better surface finish. So we are going to rock 5,000 RPM, uh, which is the max uh, speed of this machine. And then we're going to up that cutting feed rate to 60 inches per minute. Okay. Um, and then our post processor, this last tab, this is tool one. It is in slot one on our tool carousel, on our tool changer. Um, it's always going to be slot one. We're going to name that slot one. There's that first tool created. There's tool one, three inch face mill. You got some info about it. Um, let's go ahead and create our other tools. I'm gonna do these a little bit quicker. Uh, second tool is our engraving bit. Uh, so pick engrave, I'm just gonna say engraving. Uh, cutting data. <clears throat> okay, change this to 1 16th of an inch. Um, it is carbide. It is two flute. I already did the diameter. I'm going to change the shaft diameter to match that. Okay. Oops, sorry, not three sixteenths, one sixteenth. Okay, and there, uh, hop over to cutting data. Because of how small this thing is, we are going to run this wide open. And our cutting feed rate, we're actually going to crank to like between 80 and 100 inches per minute. Just because in theory this is taking off like two and a half thousandths of an inch. Um, not a lot of material. It is a brittle, it is, you know, very little, very brittle uh, tool. But uh, because we're taking off so little material, we can kind of fly through it as far as our cutting feed rate. So 80, 100, somewhere in that range is going to be fine. Uh, post processor, this is tool two. Make sure it's labeled tool two. That's in tool slot two of our tool changer. Uh, tool three is gonna be our chamfer bit. It's the same tool, I'm gonna name this chamfer. Cutting data, um, this is a two flute. This one is just high speed steel. And it is a half inch in diameter. And cutting data, we are going to run this one a little bit slower at about 2,500 RPM. And we're going to leave our cutting feed rate at that 40 inches per minute. And this is tool three. The rest can stay as is. And now this last tool is going to be a little bit different. This is going to be a drill okay, for drilling holes. This is going to be uh, an eighth inch drill bit. Okay, our cutting data. Uh, it is a two flute, high speed steel, one eighth inch diameter. Uh, no shaft, no holder. Cutting data for this tool is gonna be very, 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 very important. Um, we cannot run a drill bit at high RPMs with high plunge feed, with high feed rates. Uh, we gotta run this at a much slower RPM because the tool is just not built to handle those high RPMs that are high loads. Um, we're gonna be rocking 750 for our spindle speed and a 10 inch per minute plunge rate. Okay. Uh, these on the other tools, those rates are a little bit more flexible. These are pretty rigid. We don't want to stray too far from this or we're going to be snapping off drill bits left and right. Check our pulse processor, make sure it's tool four. Boom. Uh, I have my four tool library um, that are going to be my kind of default first four tools uh, on that CNC mill. If you're creating tools for another piece of equipment, then you can create a new library. Say we're going to do now the plasma table. Okay, uh, you can create your own little tool library there for that plasma table as well. Or you might create a tool library for uh, the CNC router. Okay, uh, we can create kind of custom tool libraries for each individual machine. Okay, within our local libraries that we can then access uh, from any file location. Um, beyond that, um, it's going to be kind of up to you uh, to figure out, you know, what are the appropriate tools, um, what do you have available to you, what are you going to pick to do the job that you want. Uh, we got some flexibility in tooling, we got lots of tools downstairs, it's just what goes into the machine at what slot uh, is going to be kind of at uh, the user discretion. It's only those first four tools that are going to be kind of set up as um, kind of default to what they are. Uh, that's going to do it for this video.